The creation of the Lawman cast was a meticulous process, with each actor carefully selected to bring depth and authenticity to their roles. For the lead role of Marshal Dan Troop, John Russell was an easy choice. Known for his strong presence and stoic demeanor, Russell had already proven his abilities in Western roles. His audition showcased his knack for portraying authority and integrity, making him the perfect fit for the no-nonsense lawman. When it came to casting the role of Lily Merrill, the local saloon owner with a heart of gold, producer Jules Skirmer and creator Walter Mirisch agreed that Peter Rogers' wife Peggy would be ideal. With her striking beauty and undeniable charm, Peggy Rogers brought Lily to life, creating a character both strong and vulnerable. For Deputy Johnny McKay, the producers sought a fresh face, settling on Peter Brown. Brown's chemistry with Russell was evident during auditions, and his youthful energy added a dynamic contrast to Russell's stern marshal. Selecting the role of Marshal Troops Deputy, Billy Nixon, required finding an actor who could hold his own against the seasoned John Russell. Cooperman, a young and talented actor, proved to be the perfect choice. His natural charisma and strong screen presence solidified his role in the series. The casting of Lawman proved to be a pivotal moment in television history, as the show's compelling characters and gripping storylines captivated audiences for four seasons. The chemistry between the actors, as well as their individual talents, contributed to the enduring success of this classic series. From today, that will give Sellers time to cool off. Then I'll warn him to get out and find him. The 1958 TV series Lawman was brought to life by director Richard Lang, who had a distinct vision and approach. Lang's creative influences included classic westerns and film noir, which he blended to create a unique style. He favored tight, tense shots, using shadows and light to build suspense. This style was a departure from the more expansive, picturesque westerns of the time. Lang's collaborative spirit was key to the success of Lawman. He worked closely with the cast and crew, encouraging their input and ideas. He fostered a supportive and creative environment which allowed the actors to deliver nuanced and compelling performances. Lang's approach to directing was hands-on, yet respectful of the actor's craft. John Russell, who played the lead role of Marshal Dan Troop, credited Lang with helping him shape his character. Lang encouraged Russell to explore the complexities of Troop, resulting in a multi-dimensional portrayal. Russell described Lang as a director who knew how to get the best out of his actors. The set design and cinematography of Lawman also reflect Lang's vision. The sets were designed to be realistic and functional, with a focus on practicality over grandeur. The cinematography was subtle yet effective, using wide shots to establish the setting and close-ups to capture the actor's expressions. In summary, Richard Lang's directorial vision was instrumental in bringing Lawman to life. His unique style, collaborative approach, and commitment to realism contributed to the enduring appeal of this classic TV series. Hey, what I'll do. I won't hear his case until a week from today. That will give Sellers time to cool off. Lawman is a 1958 TV series that follows the story of a small town sheriff, Dan Troop, played by John Russell. The show is set in Laramie, Wyoming, and highlights the challenges Troop faces in maintaining law and order. Throughout the series, Troop's character develops, and he transforms from a stern and unyielding lawman to a more compassionate and understanding figure. Out of the many roles in this TV series, Troop's character was my favorite. He embodied the spirit of a true lawman while also showing vulnerability and humanity. One of my cherished memories associated with this TV series is watching it with my grandfather. We would sit together every week, eagerly waiting to see what challenges Troop would face next. It was a special bonding time for us, and I will always cherish those memories. As we delve deeper into this classic, you will discover many funny, shocking, and sad facts that will keep you on the edge of your seat. For instance, did you know that the show was initially canceled after its first season due to low ratings, but was later brought back due to popular demand? We would love to hear your stories and memories related to this TV series. What was your favorite episode or character? How did this show impact you? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. You want? Johnny, just take Tina and the driver. Yes, sir. Miss, let's go her. In the late 1950s, the TV series Lawman brought Western drama to the small screen. The show's production was a well-orchestrated effort, with set design playing a crucial role in creating its authentic Western atmosphere. The set designers meticulously crafted each scene, paying attention to every detail, from the wooden storefronts to the dusty streets. They drew inspiration from real western towns, ensuring that the set accurately reflected the period. 
The buildings were built with authentic materials, such as aged wood and hand-forged iron, lending a sense of realism to the set. Lawman was primarily filmed on sound stages in Los Angeles, but the production team also ventured out to real locations to capture the rugged beauty of the American West. The team faced numerous logistical challenges during location shoots, from dealing with unpredictable weather to ensuring the cast and crew had all the necessary resources. One innovative technique employed during the production of Lawman was the use of a new type of camera mount. This mount allowed for smoother camera movements, enhancing the show's visual appeal. It also enabled the camera to follow the action more closely, immersing viewers in the drama. Despite the challenges, the production team of Lawman managed to create a compelling and authentic Western series. The show's enduring popularity is a testament to their hard work and dedication. Face is familiar somehow, but... Well, I guess your ma wouldn't make a point of it. In the late 1950s, a classic Western television series called Lawman made its debut. This show, running from 1958 to 1962, became a staple of the genre, known for its compelling characters and intriguing storylines. The series follows the life of Marshal Dan Troop, played by John Russell, as he maintains law and order in the fictional town of Laramie, Wyoming. Born on January 3, 1920, in South River, New Jersey, Russell was no stranger to the world of acting. He had already appeared in numerous films and television shows before taking on the role of Dan Troop. His co-star, Peter Brown, who played Deputy Johnny McKay, was also an experienced actor, having appeared in various productions prior to Lawman. Brown was born on October 5, 1935, in New York City, making him a relatively young addition to the cast. The show's plot revolves around the relationship between Troop and McKay, with McKay evolving from a green deputy to a seasoned lawman under Troop's guidance. The series explores various themes, including the challenges of law enforcement, the complexities of frontier life, and the dynamics of interpersonal relationships. Lawman was filmed in black and white, which adds to its classic appeal. The show's cinematography is notable for its wide shots of the American West, capturing the vastness and beauty of the landscape. The production design is also commendable, with set pieces and props that accurately reflect the period. The series' success can be attributed to its talented cast and crew. John Russell's portrayal of Dan Troop is stoic and commanding, making him a believable and relatable lawman. Peter Brown's performance as Johnny McKay is equally impressive, showing his character's growth and development throughout the series. Lawman also boasts a talented writing team, with episodes penned by notable writers such as John Dunkel and Jean L. Kuhn. The show's scripts are well-written, with engaging dialogue and thought-provoking storylines. In conclusion, Lawman is a classic Western television series that has stood the test of time. Its compelling characters, intriguing storylines, and high-quality production make it a must-watch for fans of the genre. Whether you're a seasoned Western enthusiast or new to the genre, Lawman is sure to provide an entertaining viewing experience. Sound like you speak from experience. Oh, experience is my long suit. Most of it bad. No, well, I had a... In the late 1950s, Lawman, a groundbreaking TV series, graced the screens and captivated audiences with its compelling narratives and emotional depth. A significant contributor to its success was the evocative musical score and soundtrack that perfectly complemented the show's themes and tones. Crafting the music for this classic was no small feat. The composers and musicians worked tirelessly to create a soundscape that would heighten the audience's emotional connection to the storyline. The score was composed by Bernard Herrmann, a renowned figure in the world of film music, who also created iconic soundtracks for movies like Psycho and Vertigo. Herrmann's approach to scoring Lawman was meticulous and thoughtful. He aimed to capture the essence of the Wild West while staying true to the show's emotional core. To achieve this, he incorporated traditional Western musical elements, such as the use of harmonicas, acoustic guitars, and percussions, but also experimented with unconventional orchestration techniques to create a unique and captivating sound. One of the most memorable aspects of Lawman's score is its haunting main theme. With its melancholic melody and poignant harmonies, the theme encapsulates the loneliness and hardships faced by the series' protagonist, a lawman trying to maintain order in a chaotic frontier town. The theme's emotional resonance is further amplified by Herman's use of a solo trumpet, which adds a sense of longing and nostalgia. In addition to the score, Lawman's soundtrack also featured popular songs of the era, carefully selected to enhance the narrative 
and emotional tone of each episode. These songs not only provided a sense of historical context, but also served as a reflection of the characters' inner worlds and experiences. The musicians involved in creating Lawman's score and soundtrack were equally dedicated to their craft. Many of them were seasoned professionals with extensive experience in the film and television industry. Their combined expertise and passion resulted in a timeless and memorable soundtrack that continues to captivate listeners today. In conclusion, the creation of Lawman's score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort that required immense skill, creativity, and dedication. By combining traditional Western musical elements with innovative composition techniques, the composers and musicians were able to craft a soundtrack that perfectly complemented the show's narrative and emotional tone. The haunting main theme and carefully curated selection of popular songs continue to resonate with audiences, serving as a testament to the enduring power of music and storytelling. About the same. She keeps saying her husband's name. How? How? At the start of the series, a pet cat could be found in the office of the main characters, Dan and Johnny. However, the cat vanished as season one progressed, and its disappearance was never addressed. To draw in more female viewers in the second season, the producers decided to have Peter Brown leave his shirt unbuttoned. When Johnny was only 10 years old, his parents were tragically killed. He was then taken in and raised by two separate family friends, whom he affectionately referred to as uncles. Uncle Jess was portrayed by Edgar Buchanan, and Uncle Joe was played by Frank Ferguson. I grew up here a big man. You carry a lot of weight around here. In the second episode of this classic, The Honorable Man, the lawman confronts a reckless gunslinger named Frank Brady. The tense confrontation in the saloon showcases the exceptional direction, performance, and cinematography that made the series stand out. The scene opens with a camera focused on the lawman's face, revealing his determination and grit. As he enters the saloon, the camera pans to Frank Brady, capturing the actor's nuanced portrayal of a dangerous and arrogant character. The director masterfully builds tension by using close-ups of the actor's faces, highlighting their expressions and body language. The camera work is deliberate, and precise, capturing every detail of the scene. The show's cinematography is particularly impressive in the saloon's dimly lit interior. The muted colors and shadows create a sense of foreboding, heightening the tension between the two characters. During the confrontation, the actors' performances are riveting. The lawman's quiet authority contrasts sharply with Frank Brady's reckless arrogance. The actors' delivery of their lines is measured and deliberate, adding to the scene's intensity. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant. The confrontation between the lawman and Frank Brady is a classic example of the show's exploration of the complexities of law and order in the Wild West. The scene resonates with audiences because of its authenticity and realism. The actors' performances and the cinematography transport viewers to the Wild West, making them feel like they are part of the action. The director of the episode, Robert Altman, later commented on the scene's impact saying, it was a pivotal moment in the series, and it set the tone for what was to come. The scene was a testament to the power of visual storytelling and the importance of strong performances. The show's creator, John Michael Hayes, also spoke about the scene's significance, saying, it was a defining moment for the lawman and the series as a whole. The scene encapsulated the show's themes of law and order, morality, and the complexities of human nature. Overall, the confrontation scene between the lawman and Frank Brady is a masterclass in visual storytelling. The direction, performance, and cinematography combine to create a powerful and memorable moment that resonates with audiences to this day. Can't you be moved? That's out of the question. You wouldn't be lying to me, would you? Initially, the show's popularity extended beyond the screen, resulting in the release of 11 comic books from 1958 to 1962. Throughout its run, the deputy character faced personal dilemmas that led him to resign three times. His internal conflicts arose from a suspected familial connection to an outlaw, a misunderstanding over credit for a kill, and the emotional aftermath of shooting a friend from his youth. Emery Parnell, known for his robust and authoritative screen presence, contributed to the series by portraying the bartender, adding to his diverse roles in cinema as affable characters and authority figures. You get a file out of that toolbox, you hear? The 1958 TV series Lawman, with its compelling storyline and strong characters, left a significant cultural and social impact. 
The show resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of Western action and thought-provoking themes. It was a departure from traditional Westerns, focusing on the moral dilemmas of its characters and the complexities of law enforcement in a frontier town. This classic influenced pop culture in various ways. It popularized the genre of urban Westerns, which combined Western settings with contemporary social issues. The show's protagonist, Dan Troop, became a symbol of moral authority and justice, inspiring similar characters in later productions. Moreover, Lawman contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It explored the tension between individual freedom and societal order, a topic that resonated with audiences during the time. The show also tackled issues of race, gender, and class, challenging societal norms and fostering critical thinking among its viewers. In essence, Lawman's cultural and social impact can be seen in its influence on pop culture and its contribution to discussions on relevant social themes. By presenting complex characters and thought-provoking storylines, it left an indelible mark on the television landscape. No. Trouble? No, not that kind. In the classic television series Lawman, the character of Jake, played by Dan Sheridan, was a bartender at the Birdcage Saloon. His last name, Summers, was only mentioned once throughout the show. In season three, Dan's character suffered a total of five injuries, including four gunshot wounds, while his co-star Johnny faced five injuries but no gunshots. Dan's character was responsible for shooting and injuring 22 people and killing four in a single episode, while Johnny shot and injured three people and killed five throughout the season. Moving on to season four, Dan was injured twice and shot three times, while Johnny faced seven injuries but no gunshots. Dan's character shot and injured 11 people and killed 19, while Johnny shot and injured five people and killed nine. Dan's most unusual injury was falling into a hole, and the most people he and Johnny shot and killed in one episode was five. Interestingly, despite efforts by Warner Brothers to tone down the violence in the show, the number of people shot and killed by Dan remained the same between seasons two and three. However, Johnny's kills were cut in half from season two to three. Those shot and injured by Dan also remained consistent, while Johnny's shot and wounded numbers increased from one to three. In season four, Lily, another character, was shot in episode two, and she also killed one person in episode nine. This just goes to show that violence was still a prevalent theme in the show, despite efforts to reduce it. Overall, the Lawman series featured a range of injuries and fatalities, with Dan's character taking on a significant role in the violence depicted on screen. Kid thinking I was his father? Me, Barney Tremaine? <laughs> Imagine me whelping a pup that a girl. Lawman, a 1958 TV series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show's realistic portrayal of life in the Old West was widely praised. In a review for the New York Times, Jack Gould described Lawman as a consistently intelligent and adult Western series. He commended the show's strong and well-defined characters and its admirable restraint in the use of violence. Audiences appreciated the show's focus on character development and storytelling rather than sensationalism. Lawman was a departure from many other Westerns of the time, which often relied on formulaic plots and exaggerated action sequences. The show's star, John Russell, received particular acclaim for his nuanced portrayal of Marshal Dan Troop. Lawman was also recognized with several awards and nominations. In 1960, the show received an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Western Series, while it ultimately lost to another classic Western, Gunsmoke. The nomination was a testament to the high quality of Lawman. The following year, John Russell received an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Performance by an Actor in a Series. Again, while he did not win, the nomination was a recognition of Russell's talent and dedication to the role of Dan Troop. These accolades are significant for those involved in Lawman as they demonstrate the show's impact and enduring legacy. The positive critical reception and awards nominations helped to establish Lawman as a classic Western and a landmark television series. The show's influence can still be seen today in the many Westerns that continue to prioritize character development and storytelling over sensationalism. Kind of strange you don't remember more. Buddy Kansas folks call it. They called it rock. In the TV series Lawman, actor John Russell had the unique experience of playing two different characters in the same story on two separate shows. The story featured a retired gunfighter who, after learning he can no longer use his shooting hand, 
returns to the widow of his former business partner to offer her money that is rightfully hers. However, the widow's son challenges the gunfighter to a shootout, and the hero tries to talk him out of it. In Cheyenne, Russell played the retired gunfighter, while in Lawman, he took on the role of the hero. Moreover, Lawman had a consistent sound effect for any time a character fell to the ground, regardless of the cause. This meant that whether a character fell off a horse or while hiding behind a rock, the same sound was used. Interestingly, beginning in Season 3, Warner Brothers began to tone down the violence in Lawman. Instead of killing the villains, Dan and Johnny would only wound them. This change marked a shift in the show's approach to storytelling and action. In all, Lawman was a classic TV show that offered a unique experience for its lead actor and made deliberate choices in its storytelling. I've already told you to go more times than I usually do. During the filming of this classic, Lawman, the crew faced many challenges. For instance, John Russell, who played the lead role of Lieutenant Johnny Ram, was an accomplished actor, but had never ridden a horse before. This led to some humorous situations on set as he tried to master horse riding while also delivering his lines. The show's creator, Jules Schirmer, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He would often spend hours discussing minor plot points and character developments with the writers and directors. His dedication paid off as Lawman became one of the most popular shows of its time. One of the most memorable episodes involved a dangerous stunt where a stagecoach had to be driven off a cliff. To ensure safety, the production team built a replica stagecoach and used a remote control device to trigger the explosion. However, things didn't go as planned when the explosion was so powerful that it shattered windows in nearby buildings. Despite such mishaps, the cast and crew remained committed to bringing their best to the set. Peter Brown, who played Deputy Marshal Randy Stone, once revealed how he used to practice his quick draw skills for hours to perfect the character's tough guy image. Behind the scenes, the set of Lawman was filled with camaraderie and hard work. Despite the long hours and challenging conditions, the team managed to create a show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on television history. I'm going to write an editorial for today's edition. Fry the hides off of my will. In the 1958 TV series Lawman, one of the writers credited goes by the name W. Hermanos, which is a covert reference to the Warner Brothers studio. This signifies that the script used in the series was recycled from another show with Hermanos being the Spanish translation of Brothers. Interestingly, this Western series was one of the rare shows produced by Warner Brothers during the late 1950s to early 1960s that did not feature any crossover characters from their other popular shows. The lead actor, John Russell, was only 37 years old when he was cast as Dan Troop, a character who was supposed to be more mature and experienced. To convey the appearance of age and maturity, Russell took it upon himself to have his hair streaked with gray and lowered his voice to sound older. This just goes to show the dedication and attention to detail that went into making this classic TV series. Well, if there's nothing more, I have work to do. The 1958 TV series Lawman holds a significant place in film history as a groundbreaking Western show. It aired for four seasons, gaining a loyal following and leaving a lasting impact on the industry. The series, created by John Robinson and Frank Pearson, was one of the first to depict a marshal's life realistically, focusing on the moral complexities of law enforcement. Featuring John Russell as Marshal Dan Troop, the show presented a nuanced portrayal of a lawman, which resonated with viewers. This classic TV series paved the way for future filmmaking by inspiring a more realistic approach to westerns and other genres. Lawman was a pioneer in its time addressing social issues and displaying moral dilemmas faced by its characters. This approach was unique for the Western genre, which often focused on black and white portrayals of good and evil. By presenting a morally ambiguous world, Lawman inspired filmmakers to explore similar themes in their work. The show's influence can be seen in various subsequent productions, such as the 1989 film Lonesome Dove and the popular HBO series Deadwood. These works continued the tradition of exploring moral complexities in the Wild West, building upon the foundation laid by Lawman. Moreover, Lawman was one of the first TV shows to employ a serialized format, with ongoing storylines and character development. This format became increasingly popular in the following decades, as seen in shows like Dallas and Dynasty. In conclusion, the 1958 TV series Lawman has left an indelible mark on film history. 
Its innovative storytelling, morally complex characters, and serialized format have inspired future filmmakers and contributed to the evolution of the Western genre and television as a whole. Kept your meal warm. Thanks. 45 cents. In the TV series Lawman, the characters are often seen wearing heavy coats, reflecting the cooler climate of Laramie, Wyoming. This is a more accurate portrayal of the state's weather compared to other series like The Virginian or Laramie, which depict warmer weather with characters rarely wearing heavier clothing. At the start of the second season, Peggy Castle joined the cast as Lily Merrill, a saloon owner. Her relationship with Dan, the main character, shares many similarities with the dynamic between Marshall Matt Dillon and Miss Kitty Russell in Gunsmoke. John Russell, the actor who plays Dan Troop, based his character on a police officer he knew during his service in the U.S. Marines. This personal connection adds depth to his portrayal of a lawman in the Wild West. <laughs> you guys have another round here. Yeah. We got a hundred dollars who would have gone to the judge. So, <laughs> the drinks are on me. In the classic television series Lawman, recurring character Oni O'Reilly, portrayed by Joel Gray, was depicted as being younger than Johnny McKay, played by Peter Brown. However, in reality, the opposite was true, as Gray was three and a half years older than Brown. Throughout the first season, the character Dan, played by John Russell, faced numerous injuries and conflicts. He was injured a total of six times and shot twice, while his counterpart, Johnny, was injured four times and never shot. Dan's actions resulted in the shooting and injury of seven people, as well as the shooting and killing of 24. Johnny, on the other hand, shot and injured three people and shot and killed 12. Some of Dan's more notable injuries throughout the first season included being mauled by a bear and hit by a tree being used as a wagon jack. In one episode, both Dan and Johnny shot and killed five people, marking the highest number of individuals killed by the pair in a single episode. Peter Brown, who played Johnny McKay, was the last surviving main cast member of Lawman. Both John Russell and Peggy Castle passed away in 1991 and 1973, respectively. Brown lived until 2016, making him the last surviving member of the show's main cast. This classic television series left a lasting impact on its viewers, with Brown's character, Johnny McKay, being a particular fan favorite. Don't just stand there, Doc. Get on that sap. You too, Marshal. And put some meat. Did Lawman, the 1958 TV series, leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear your stories and memories about this classic. How did it influence your perspective on cinema? Perhaps you were captivated by the show's compelling characters or its exploration of justice in the Wild West. Maybe it was the thrilling gunfights or the dramatic tension that kept you hooked. Whatever your reasons, we'd love to hear them. Share your thoughts and memories with us and let's start a conversation. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's delve into the impact of this classic TV series together and see how it resonates with our community. So, tell us, how did Lawman influence you personally? We can't wait to hear your stories. From Laramie in short order.